Hello and welcome back to Elliot Designs. Today we are going over what is linear phase EQ and why do we want to use it. First of all, let's start off with something called phase shifting. It's something that happens with minimum phase. Minimum phase being what's used in EQ unless using a linear phase method, such as in my tutorials. Now, this phase shifting with minimum phase means that the EQ doesn't behave in the way you think it would. Before we get as to why this is the case, and what I mean by it, I'll go over a couple of phase basics with you. As you may know, sound is made up of cycles, cycles that repeat a given amount of time in one second. This is what we call hertz, 1 hertz being 1 cycle per second, 10 hertz being 10 cycles per second, so on, so forth. A good visualisation of a single cycle will be imagining a cone moving forwards, then backwards, and finally back to rest. That is a single cycle. Now that we have that out of the way, what is phase? Positive phase can be described as having one wave shifted to the right of another. Negative phase is the opposite. The wave has been shifted to the left of the original. We measure this phase difference in degrees. 180 degrees is what we call out of phase. When two waves are out of phase, 180 degrees apart, they completely cancel each other out if they have the same amplitude, or in audio terms, gain. 360 degrees is in phase, but it is a wave that is an entire cycle in front of another. Now that is a different issue. Now that we have some basic information down, let's get into some visualisation that will help me explain to you why differences in phase cause problems with EQ. On screen is a very useful visualisation tool I found on a website called Physics Classroom. We have a wave on the top representing a given frequency and a wave here representing another frequency and then on the bottom is a summation of these two waves together. The way I'm going to explain it is this top wave is your input signal so this will be a given frequency that can be found in a music track. This would be our correction frequency that is being applied to make sure our room is corrected. Now, what we have here is the waves line up perfectly exactly how we want them for this given frequency, and this is what is called in phase. And as you can see, because they are in phase, it's perfectly doubling. Now, as we start to shift, this second wave, the one that's representing the EQ that's being applied for a given frequency out of phase by moving it slightly in front, like so. As you can see, it's very much shifted and the end result is they are not summing perfectly. What that means is, okay, yes, you're applying the given amount of gain to the original signal. It's the exact gain you want, but because it's not lined up with the original signal, i.e. it's out of phase, they're not actually summing. They're actually cancelling each other out slightly. And what that's ending up with is not a gain in signal, but instead a loss in signal. That is why with minimum phase, i.e. normal EQ, it may sound a bit weird because the actual EQ, although it looks like it will be doing something correctly, it actually isn't. It's, in this instance, it's doing the opposite. This is a very extreme example, and you usually wouldn't see it cancelling out totally. But what you might see is it doesn't perfectly sum if they're slightly out of phase, so it's not the full extent. Now, this also happens for gain reduction. Imagine you have your frequency here, your input frequency, and then you have your gain EQ, and instead of adding gain using this EQ, you are subtracting it, so it would be 1 minus 2. You'd want these to perfectly line up so that you get rid of this frequency altogether or make it smaller. Now this would be approximating what happens when you are taking away gain from a signal. You're trying to cut out some of the frequencies. And of course, as you shift that phase across, you aren't applying the negative gain in part two, which is your EQ, as effectively as you want it to be. Hopefully that makes sense, and effectively it shows you that as you shift one of the waves slightly in front of the other, you aren't getting the exact response that you want. Now for the second problem with minimum phase EQ. Even if you had them perfectly in phase, you may have the EQ correction 
being applied at a much later point in time. What would that be? So remember how I talked about 360 degrees out of phase? This could be the case here. If the EQ wave is being applied 360 degrees out of phase, you'd take this point here, our frequency is being generated, and when it's 360 degrees out of phase, it is only at this point that the wave starts being corrected. Our correction is only being applied not for this portion of the wave, but only after a full wave after that. Now this is called time smearing, and especially at low frequencies where waves are much longer and therefore you have a much longer delay for a full wave cycle, this becomes much more prominent effect. So essentially it almost starts to sound as though that the base is being smeared. Also can be sometimes called muddy or unclear. Those are some reasons why EQ'd bass might sound that way, especially when drastic corrections are being applied. Now those are the problems with minimum phase. With linear phase, all of that is corrected by adding a given amount of delay at the start and then having all of these frequency corrections being applied at the same point in time after a given milliseconds has gone by. The longer time has gone by before the correction is being started, the lower in frequency the linear phase can represent. That is why when we use a larger number of samples in programs such as Rephase, we're able to represent linear phase EQ down to a lower frequency level. Thank you for watching my video on why linear phase is better than minimum phase. If you have any questions or queries, please put them in the comments. I'll either answer them in the comments or even do a whole new video if there's enough questions about the topic or for anything that I may not have covered or something that you may not have fully understood. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Please subscribe and like if you liked the video. Goodbye for now.